Exploring with friends is always a good time, especially during the summer months here in North Carolina. In riparian areas, or areas bordering a river or stream, many reptiles and amphibians can be found taking advantage of the food, shelter, and, of course, water resources provided by the aquatic system. On today's adventure, we were searching for one particular species of snake that specializes in surviving on the fringes of streams and small rivers, but ended up starting a bit smaller. All right, guys, we actually have the very first reptile of the day and the very first snake of the day. This is an eastern worm snake. Now, this guy is actually really deep in shed right now. You can see this coloration is very different than what we typically see. We have you know much darker colors in the top, um, and then the bottom usually have a different color, a pink, sometimes even kind of a reddish color. Um, this is also a really calm individual. I'm not sure if it's because he's probably like 95% blind um, or just because this one is chill, but he's just like hanging out on my finger, which never happens with worm snakes. Usually I pick them up and they like absolutely spaz out and go all over the place. Um, so I'm really glad this one is not doing that. And I'll hopefully really get some good B-roll shots of him. But as you guys know, these are fossorial snakes, so they spend, you know, 95% of their lives probably underground. Um, and you're usually only seeing these if you're flipping logs or rocks to look for them. And they'll be under those hunting and vertebrates. They are called worm snakes because they do eat a lot of worms. Because they're slimy, they go down the throat easily, and they fit nicely in his little body cavity. But, <laughs> I mean, I kind of just want to keep him on my finger the rest of the day and see how long he stays with me. But what we're actually going to do is go find a spot to get some B-roll. But... This is a super cool find. That's the first snake I've seen in like a month because I've been up north where there's no snakes. <laughs> Look at that. Dude, that thing was perfect to film. Sweet. After letting that little guy get back to shedding, we continued searching for our main target. And after only 20 minutes or so, Nathan spotted something swimming in a shallow pool beside the main river channel. Yes! <laughs> that was hilarious. Well, that was fast. This is my first one ever. Dude, yeah, it's a lifer for me too. It's freaking epic. He's like, look at those snakes over there. Oh, a snake! Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, I cannot believe that we just walked down to this rock. Well, let me start. I can believe we just found one because that's what we came here for, but I am so excited, guys, that we did find the snake. This is a queen snake, a species that I've been really hoping to find for a very long time now. Now, this is an interesting species for a couple of different reasons. For one thing, their geographic range in North Carolina is just totally whack. There's a couple species that are like that, um, with that patchy distribution. But these guys, um, there are like pocket populations and good habitat in the Triangle area, and then like kind of at the top of North Carolina, and then definitely in the mountains, you're supposed to be able to find them. I don't think they occur at all, or, I mean, they might occur in very small areas near the coast. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those species that likes a very specific kind of habitat and tends to stick to those areas. So with queen snakes, it's like this is the habitat they like. It's smaller river systems with plenty of rocks from the hide under and bask on. But ecologically, these snakes are really interesting as well. Now, despite their name, queen snakes, these are nothing like king snakes. These do not eat other snakes. They eat one thing and one thing only, and that is crayfish. So these are actually very, very close cousins of the crayfish snakes. I think technically they're actually in the crayfish snake genus. Um, so you could say that this is basically just a fancy crayfish snake. Obviously, though, they are bigger than most of the crayfish snakes you find. Um, queen snakes, I think, can get up to around three feet long. I've seen some pictures of some pretty hefty ones like that. So these are eating pretty much exclusively crayfish, and not only crayfish, soft-shelled crayfish. So right after a crayfish molts, its shell is soft, and it's a lot more easily consumable than when that carapace kind of hardens out again. So they can only exist in areas where you have lots of crayfish. And, you know, it turns out crayfish also like to hide under rocks. You can see the coloration of these is pretty distinctive. That belly is really gorgeous. You know, it's not one of those species that you would probably confuse with a venomous snake. Maybe if you're an experienced, you could say it's a cottonmouth because it happens to live near water and it's kind of darker colored. But I mean, you can see there's like four distinct lines there. Of this line, this lighter colored line on the side is usually how I identify them though. Um, pretty much all of them have it. There are species that there is some variation in color, but usually it's that gray on the top and then you have stripes going down to the bottom. So kind of just, you know, typical crayfish snake coloration um, with that striping. So this is definitely an adult individual. We think it's probably a male based on the tail. 
Um, it could get a little bit bigger than this, but not too much bigger. But you know, a snake of this size out here eating crayfish, it is fulfilling a very specific ecological niche. So that's one reason they're important. They're one of the few um, crayfish predators out here. Um, but also, you know, they can get pretty big and so they do represent a lot of energy. Lots of different consumers will come after a crayfish snake. You know, any bird of prey, large fish, larger snakes, um, any of those guys would definitely snack on one of these. So they do represent that important kind of middle layer of the ecosystem. This is such a cool species. I do want to get some b-roll of this because they just look so unique. And it's very rare that I get to get hands on with a crayfish snake um, because there just aren't that many places where you can find them. All right, Nathan's gonna release this awesome snake right now. Hopefully we can see it get some swimming action in. Dude, look at that. It looks like a eel. That is gorgeous. Nice work, guys. Lifers! Lifers. Well, Nathan is a professional, but for us, yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's just about it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the queen snake. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel for new educational wildlife content coming on Saturday mornings as often as possible. Thanks so much for watching and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.